This is Bonnie Vent. The date is August 10, 2009, and the time is 1 p.m. Pacific Time. This video is a recap of the channeled information provided thus far and some possible validation of that information. No one can provide absolute proof. We can, however, look at how specific is the information and can it be validated in some way other than just taking the medium's word for it. There are a few things that we can do to examine this further. We can take into consideration the tone and personality traits of Michael Jackson and possible validation of that tone or personality by people who knew him personally. Since these messages are public and guarded, we can also take into consideration the fans that have followed him for years and are aware of every public move made by Michael Jackson while alive. I would like to take this time to publicly thank all the fans who have written to me that found these messages comforting. Michael Jackson fans have been very supportive and the ones who have taken the time to write to me all think this is him. This is not scientific, but still meaningful. People have asked me if the first trans-channeled messages have been validated by a family member. The answer is yes. She is, however, a distant relative. She received a private message from Michael Jackson regarding time she spent with him in Gary, Indiana before the Jackson 5 hit it big. She immediately remembered the event and confirmed that it was a family get-together and they played games. According to her, this was the last time she spent one-on-one -on -one time with Michael. She was very touched by the fact that he remembered her. She also has reviewed the Trans Channel videos and she is convinced that this is Michael Jackson. We can also examine if there were any events that were witnessed by more than just the medium. This type of event occurred on 6:2609 at 2.50 p.m. Pacific Time. For those that play poker, you will realize immediately how rare it would be for these events to happen back to back and also be a meaningful way to tell us the identity of the spirit person. We know from the distant family member that Michael Jackson liked to play games. This information was not known to the medium until 7809. You can check the timeline for more details, but two hands were played back to back. The first was a full house, three jacks and two fives, or Jackson five. The second hand was four jacks up and a five in the hole. We all felt a presence just before the events occurred. The event was witnessed by four people. We can also examine a matchup of information that was provided ahead of time, but that now appears to be true based upon another reliable source. The card game is one example of this, but there is more. On 7809, Michael provided a message for Brooks Shields. It's very normal for a medium to ask the spirit person to provide some information that only the recipient would understand. In the case of Brooke Shields, he said to tell her that I had a pet rabbit because she has a soft spot for rabbits. I would love to get Brooke Shields to comment and perhaps one day she will. However, if you do a Google search on Brooke Shields plus rabbit, you will find the Silly Rabbit Chocolate Company of Ashland, Oregon. Both Brooke Shields and Michael Jackson are listed side by side as celebrity patrons of this small shop in a very small town very far away from Hollywood. My rabbit's name is Chandler, which is also a meaningful name to Michael Jackson. This brings us to the interview with Jermaine Jackson on Larry King Live on 8709. In the channeled message dated 72709 and published on YouTube on 72909, Michael talks about Jermaine in regards to communication with him. Michael says, Jermaine also knows when I'm around, but he cannot hear me. I'm not sure why he can hear other people that are in spirit. He has had the ability always. Larry King asked Jermaine Jackson whether he feels Michael's presence. Here is what Jermaine had to say about the topic. Are there ever moments, Kenny, you, I know how close you were, where you feel his presence? I feel his presence all the time because there's a time in the morning when it's like just about what dawn or mm. and, and it's this the lights are still on there's the uh, lights in the city and you can see the sun coming up over the mountains and it's a special time for me to go out and i just 
talked to this guy, and I talked to. to you talked to Michael. I. I, I just say things to Michael, wherever you are, I'm trying to talk to you. Do you hear me? I mean, I miss you. And hmm. it's such a beautiful time in the morning because it's quiet and very still. It's the best time of day. Yes. Yeah, it is. It goes fast, though. Next, there is a discussion of a young man who has recently been speculated as being Michael Jackson's son. In the original Trans Channel videos dated 7209, you will hear me comment about this section of lyrics in the song Billie Jean. Yeah, the, the endless songs going back and forth, um, you know, Billie Jean and um, the words of that. Um, and it switched from initially being uh, I am the one gonna dance on the floor in the round to now it's switched to a different part of the lyrics which is the kid is not my son and that keeps playing over and over uh, and th there's a feeling in my mind that these lyrics are messages in and of themselves that he's trying to play I would say it's probably someone who Michael really endeared and who wanted to just just be a part of his life and and I really don't know if he's his, his son or not but the, the fact that he's been around Michael so much because I've seen pictures of him dressed just like Michael with, with the hat and the red shirt and everything but if he's not his son we're going to continue to give him love. You like him? Yes. Just a few final thoughts. Yes I do have some limited information from him about the events of his death. There is a police investigation going on and this information is very private. He did not want this type of information made public and I am honoring his request. Many have asked me to connect them with Michael. To be clear, Michael connects with me to deliver messages both public and private. I can tell you by the emails that I have received that many people claim to have received a visit. As far as fame and fortune, there is none. No one is paying me anything, and I am taking a great personal risk to my reputation. Not many people would brave the ridicule to bring this information out to the public. We all want to know what happens after we die, and Michael seems willing to assist with this type of research. This is Bonnie Vent. Until next time, please continue to check BonnieVent.com for updates.